Jiggers, it's time for another juicy episode of How To. Orange, you glad? <laughs> Today, Don Madness wants to know how to go to sleep fast. Great question, Don. I have trouble falling asleep all the time. Except for when Pear starts to talk. Uh, what? Except when I start to talk? What are you talking about? Uh, so boring. Ha ha ha, very funny. <laughs> I thought so. All right, step one for falling asleep fast, count sheep. Yeah, because doing math is boring enough to put anybody out cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, math isn't boring. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's not the math that puts you to sleep. It's having so many fluffy sheep surrounding you. What? Sure, by the time a couple dozen sheep are crammed into your bedroom, you're gonna have fluffy sheep wool touching every part of you. Really comfy stuff. You'll sleep like a baby. I don't think that's- 33, 34, Orange! <laughs> We're talking about counting sheep in your mind. Imaginary sheep. Oh, really? Huh, guess I screwed that one up bad. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, option number two is tire yourself out during the day. If you're worn out when bedtime rolls around, you'll fall asleep no sweat. Oh, this is great. I'm an expert at tiring people out. People say they're tired of me like all the time. You don't say. You can do all sorts of stuff to tire yourself out. Chase sheep around, play catch with a sheep, go on a hike through sheep country. Wait, wh why do all these activities involve sheep? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you rather they involve cows? Nope, nope, nope. Sheep are fine. <laughs> Take them back, fellas. We won't be needing the cows today. Who are they? The moving company. <laughs> oh, brother. So anyway, once you're tired from playing with sheep all day, that's when you get all your sheep buddies to cram into your bedroom with you. And then you Orange got... enough with the sheep. Okay, okay. You heard them, guys. Back her up. Enough with the cows, too. Okay. Doesn't have to be cows. It could be anything you love, really? Presto change out. No. Presto change out. No. Presto change out. Ah, no. Presto. Uh-oh. What? What is it? I, I forgot the magic word. It's presto change out, dude. Presto cheeto? You just said it. Pretzel banjo? Presto change out. Oh, I remember it now. Oh, thank goodness. And I just lost it. Yeah, I should have got more sleep last night. Oh. <laughs> Fruit lovers, it's Orange. And Pear. Kicking off a brand new series showing you how to do all kinds of awesome stuff. Yeah. First up, we're here to show you how to tie a tie. Step one, pick a tie. Preferably an orange one. <laughs> um, sure. Th then you're gonna wanna hang it around your neck. Like a superhero's cape. What? But da da da! And then you take to the sky. Orange! What? We're talking about tying a tie. You know, for people who want to look good at business meetings and whatnot. Hey, fly <laughs> into your next business meeting and I promise you'll look awesome. <laughs> okay, can we please discuss how to actually tie the tie, please? Yep. Okay, first step, you're gonna need a crane. A crane? And then some lotion. What? Rub the crane and lotion together until the friction starts a fire. Then roast marshmallows. Yay! Orange! Pear! What are you yelling at me for? I don't know. I thought we were just yelling names at each other. Carl, Steve, Endema, Ken, Sue! <laughs> ah, great, now we're out of time. Listen, if you guys want to tie a tie, just ask your dad. And if your dad's super cool, ask your rad. <laughs> God, can you please be serious for two seconds, dude? Okay, okay. Want to tie a tie? Step one is to light the fuse of some TNT. That is not the step one of anything! Uh-oh. Guess I shouldn't have actually lit that fuse then, huh? What? Ah! Today we've got a request from Morgan Beck, who would like to know how to apply makeup. You came to the right place, Morgan, because Pear's an expert. Hey! <laughs> Well, I actually have been watching a lot of YouTube tutorials for research. As have I. First thing you're gonna wanna do is pick a lipstick shade that doesn't clash with your skin tone. Wow, that's actually true. And then apply the lipstick directly to your eyeball. What? Research shows that people find red and pink eyeballs to be the most attractive. Also apply a little lipstick to your butt if you like, to give it a rosy, spankable appearance. <laughs> Where are you coming up with this stuff? Next up is mascara. Right. Mascara can be used to extend your eyelashes. And skewer your eyeballs! Oh, are you kidding me? For cleaning, Pear. You know what they say, mascara brushes are the Q-tips of the pupil. Nobody says that! And if you put the mascara in the freezer overnight, you can enjoy a refreshing mascara pop. Enough! All right, all right. Now the last and most important thing is... Eyeshadow? TNT! Oh no. In many makeup stores, TNT can be exchanged for eyeshadow. I guess that's not untrue. Just a little eyeshadow is all it takes to give your eyes a sexy, smoky look that'll drive people wild. Wow, I'm impressed, Orange. Now because it only takes a little eyeshadow to do the trick, you're gonna have a lot left over. 
Just take it back to the makeup store and refund it with the TNT you bought it with. Orange! With your new beautiful face and a fistful of TNT, you're undoubtedly gonna be in the mood to juggle your TNT sticks next to an open flame. <laughs> Orange! It won't be long until someone comes along and starts hitting on you. You know, cause you're looking so bad. At that point, your attention is gonna be understandably divided and you'll probably drop the sticks of TNT. Yeah, I think we got that. Thank you, Orange. <laughs> It's time for how to. And wait, 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 wait. Why are all the lights out? I don't know. I'm completely in the dark about it too. <laughs> well, I guess now's a great time to tackle Charizard Films prompt, how to replace a light bulb. Replacing a light bulb doesn't have to be hard. That's right. And yet, it usually is. I heard it takes 100 toads to unscrew one. <laughs> really? Yep, one to hold the bulb and 99 to lick themselves until the room starts to spin. <laughs> Hardy har har. Moving on. Step one. You're gonna need to get to the light bulb. Now, there's a good chance it's high up and out of reach. And if you're a little apple, chances are great. <laughs> now reaching the light bulb is easy if you have rocket boosters. Just grab them on and zip up to the burnt out bulb. Be careful not to overshoot or you could wind up with a nasty headache. <laughs> Dude, rocket boosters? Why wouldn't you just use a ladder? Well, the light bulb might be on the moon, Pear. You didn't specify. All right, then allow me to specify. The light bulb is not on the moon. Jeez. <laughs> now, step two, remove the burnt out bulb. Now, unscrewing the bulb isn't gonna be easy, so you'll need to mount rocket boosters on the side of the bulb. Stop. Ah. Unscrewing the light bulb is super easy, dude. Now, would you quit it with the rocket boosters? Okay, okay. Right after this. <laughs> oh. Okay, finally, step three. Screw a new light bulb in. Now, picking the right bulb can be difficult. Right, because some bulbs might actually be TNT disguised as a light bulb. Wait, what? It's true. A light bulb could be TNT in disguise. I'm just saying. Yeah, but that's just a really weird thing to just say. Go ahead, pick a bulb, Pear. Just pick wisely. Why do you keep suggesting the light bulb is TNT? <laughs> okay, all right, here it goes. Huh? Oh, oh. Ooh, it worked. Man, I thought you were tricking me with TNT for sure. Nah, no way, Jose. Although now that the room is lit, I can finally see where I hid my TNT. Huh? Where'd you hide it? Oh, over there, near where I left the rocket boosters flying around haphazardly. Huh? <laughs> How to you do, fruit lovers? Orange and Pear here back with another juicy episode of How To. <laughs> this week, Ivan wants to know how to hack stuff. What the heck kind of question is that? <laughs> just kidding. You're in luck, Ivan. I just so happen to be the world's leetest hacker. Leetest hacker? You wouldn't understand, noob. <laughs> Let's hack. Um, what just happened? I just hacked a bunch of stuff, Pear. Computers, mainframes. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what my first question was about. What's with the cow again? I hacked it. I hacked the cow, Pear. I could you not. <laughs> Ooh, look at her go. This could be the weirdest episode yet. Hopefully. <laughs> and that brings me to step one. You're going to be a leap hacker. You have to practice, practice, practice. Cows don't hack themselves into dancing the Macarena, you know. How on earth is practice going to help you hack a cow, dude? Well, that's it. For a world-class hacker like myself, to hack into a cow's mainframe, press Control, Alt, Delete, and hold down the cow button. There is no cow button. Well, obviously, you don't have a hacker keyboard like I have. <laughs> oh. Now, can we move on to step two? <laughs> yes, yes, let's move on, please. Step two, let's hack. Ooh, mainframe, chickenpox, smoothies, beluga whales. What? I'm the world's greatest hacker. I can hack anything. Ham sandwiches, Mount Rushmore, TNT. <laughs> Holy moly, dude. I think Someone hacked your brain. You can't hack TNT. Um, I'm pretty sure you can, Pear. Yeah? Then prove it. Um, how? By hacking? Yes. Hack the TNT right now. Please, go on. No! Hacking! Huh? Ah! All aboard for this week's how-to. Thanks to the prompt provided by Tidmouth Harbor 52, today we're gonna train you how to tie your shoes. <laughs> Uh, step one is to start with your laces completely untied. And step two is to get shoes with Velcro. Boom! End of video. <laughs> what a dude! We're here to teach them how to tie laced shoes. Uh, that's gonna take forever though. Plus, I don't know how. Then why are you making a video where you're a shoe tying expert? I'm not. Now I'm making a video where I'm a spaceship expert. That's a way better video. You can't hijack the video like this. The audience tuned in expecting a video about tying their shoes. And if that's what they actually tuned in for, they should get out more, cause spaceships and aliens are way more exciting. Step one of space exploration. Get a spaceship with an intergalactic warp drive. That's not even a real thing. It sure is real. Real awesome. <laughs> Step two, find an alien who's trying to tie his shoes. Good, thank you. And blast that alien to the 
freeze because it's a super boring alien. <laughs> Orange! Now fly around a bunch doing super tight circles until you fart. <laughs> Forfing is step three, and it's a crucial step. Please tell me there's not a step four. Step four is to abandon the space exploration video because it's kind of getting boring and sticky with all that fart floating around. Instead, start doing a video about dinosaurs on trampolines. What? <laughs> look how funny they look. <laughs> dinosaurs aren't meant to be on trampolines. That's it. I'm out of here. Bear, wait. See, after that T-Rex gets off the trampoline, he's gonna need to put his shoes back on, right? I suppose so. I suppose he'll need to know how to tie his shoes. Exactly. So first the T-Rex needs to put his shoes on, but he can't because his arms are too short. <laughs> Look at him try. <laughs> Next, the T-Rex should just give up because he's never gonna get those things on. So instead, he should take up a hobby like space exploration. I can't believe I fell for this. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Ooh, there, he found a shoe planet. Leave me alone. He's going in to explore it. He sees shoe aliens everywhere. I'll be in my room if you need me. He realizes the shoe aliens are made out of TNT, but it's too late. Pull up, T-Rex astronaut. Pull up. Ah! It's time for how to use a microwave. And to thank for that, we have QWERTY Mario blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Step one, you're gonna wanna plug it in. Step two, climb inside. No, do not climb inside the microwave. But how else am I gonna become Spider-Man? Oh, also, step three, make sure there's a spider inside the microwave with you. <laughs> Orange. What? Have you never wanted to be a superhero pair? Of course I want to be a superhero, but getting inside a microwave isn't the way to do it. What superhero do you wish you could be? Not that it has anything to do with what this video is about, but Iron Man. Well, that's easy then. Step five, make sure there's a chunk of iron in the microwave with you when you plug it in. Get Orange, <laughs> stop it. Now, this is actually a good point for the audience to know. Never put metal in a microwave. You'll start a fire. On the other hand, if you ever find yourself freezing to death in the wilderness, putting metal in the microwave is a good way to get a fire going. It could save your life. Why would anyone have a microwave in the wilderness? I don't know. Why would anybody get bored with your face? <laughs> Step 900, push random buttons on the microwave until it magically starts. You don't actually have to push them at random, Orange. Yeah, because every microwave's different. So just push buttons and hope for the best. Uh... Now, if you accidentally happen to push the buttons in the correct order, you'll have punched in the sorcerer's code. The sorcerer's code unlocks all sorts of magical powers, including time travel, wine tasting, and spidey sense. Dude, give it up. You'll never be Spider-Man. Not with that attitude, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to clarify for the audience that there is no such thing as the sorcerer's code. Your microwave cannot transport you back in time. Well, it just depends on who makes the microwave. Is it GE? GE makes no magical microwave oven. Yeah, whatever. Step four billion. Put TNT into the microwave. No. Just kidding. Put a spider and a piece of iron into the microwave. No. Put pear in the microwave? Absolutely not. It's your choice, pear. It's either you or I put all these other things in. <sighs> Fine. Put all those other things in. But don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah, yes. Put TNT, a chunk of iron, and a spider in the microwave and see what happens. This is not going to be good. Huh? Ah! Welcome back, fruit lovers. I'm Orange, and this is my best friend, Pear. I'm not your best friend. Huh? But I made his t-shirts. Fine. We can be best friends for one day, but tomorrow it's over. Got it? Silly, Pear. The F stands for forever. You want it to stand for forget about it? One day it is. Woohoo! And to make this glorious day even more glorious, we've got a great prompt from Samantha Strange. How to wash your hands. Thanks, Samantha. Now, when washing your hands, the most important thing is... To make sure you have hands. Oh, these will come in handy. <laughs> har, har. True, having hands is important. But the next most important thing is to make sure you wash them for the correct amount of time. If you don't wash them long enough, you won't get all the germs off your hands. And if you wash your hands too long, you might rub them clean off and be left with bloody stumps for arms. <laughs> orange, orange. My arm. You know exactly what I'm going to say. No, I don't. I'm totally stuck. Dumped. <laughs> uh, anyway, when washing your hands, it's good to sing the entire ABCs to yourself. That's how you know you've washed your hands long enough. So, step one, learn the ABCs. Orange, we're gonna assume they know their ABCs. <laughs> if you wanna make that assumption, it's your funeral pair. A, B, D, C, Q, F, P, A, 9, Q, Poop. Hello, my name is Lee. Orange. <laughs> anyway, after you've lathered the entire time, you can go ahead and rinse your hands off and leave the restroom. But once you touch the doorknob, your hands are dirty again, so you have to wash them again. What? A, B, D, C, use Fabrice. Okay, okay, fine. Go ahead and wash your hands twice if you want. And then when you touch the doorknob on your way out, go back and wash your hands a third time. A, B, D, C, S, J, C. Orange. H, I, J, K, rowling like sartain. E, 
Enough! His hands are clean. He can leave the bathroom now. Okay, but oh no, he touched the doorknob again. Back to washing. Orange says it's too much washing. A, B, D, C, Shia LaBeouf wears jeans. H, I, J, J, Abrams tickles, please. Orange, would you stop singing? There's such a thing as washing your hands too much. I know, but we're not there yet. Oh, oh now we're there. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, fruit lovers. I'm Orange, and this is my best friend, Pear. Not true. Yeah, ha your name is Pear. I've heard you say it a bunch. I wasn't talking about my name. I was talking about- Let's get to it, folks. <laughs> this week, Carlos wants to know how to win at life. Don't we all, Carlos? Don't we all? Agreed. I think Carlos just stumbled onto the $64,000 question. Being that I'm such a winner, you mind if I take this one, Pear? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead, dude. Woohoo! Step one, find small ways to win in everyday life. Like if you're walking down the sidewalk, turn it into a game you can win. Like sidewalk bowling. Or trash can bumper cars. Or a stroller derby. <laughs> and the best part is other people won't even know they're playing, so you're sure to win. <laughs> Orange, I don't think that's what Carlos meant. He, he's asking how to win at life, not how to win knock down innocent people on the sidewalk. Oh, I gotcha. Carlos wants to know how to win at the game of life. Exactly. Well, that's it. According to the instructions, try to accumulate as many tiles as possible and- <laughs> Not the board game, dude! <laughs> Aw, did I make you mad, Pear? I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. There's only one way to truly win in life, and that's by doing what you love. That's actually a good point, Orange. What do you love to do, Pear? I love to read and hang out with my friends. Nice! Seems like you're living the dream. Yeah, I guess I am. What do you love to do, Orange? Me? Oh, I like to bang trash can lids together. Hey, yeah, 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 living the dream. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Because you've literally never done this before. Once. Oh, yeah, it's my passion. <laughs> Do you happen to have any quieter passions? Oh, sure, tons. Like, touching my tongue to other people's eyes. <laughs> Don't you mean your own eye? No, I've been there, done that. I'm moving on to other people's eyes. Now stay still. No, no, orange. Stay still. Orange, no. <laughs> You're, you're not, Orange. You just need to find a passion that isn't banging trash can lids or touching other people with your tongue. Uh, well, there is one thing. It better not be TNT. Oh, actually, no. It was watercolor painting, but you totally reminded me about TNT. Thanks, Bear. Hashtag winning. No! Hey there, fruit lovers. Orange and Bear here with another episode of How To You. Now, a lot of our past how-to videos have gone a little off the rails. Exploded off the rails, I'd say. <laughs> and Orange has promised me that this episode will answer the audience's question seriously and effectively. Yep, let's just hope this week's question is about TNT. <laughs> it's not. This week, Be A Pie wants to know how to brush your teeth. Think you can handle that, Orange? Wait, his name is Be A Pie? His screen name? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I've always wanted to be a pie. And this guy, he's living the dream. See, this is exactly how episodes go off the rails, Orange. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, man, that guy's a pie. No, he isn't. Uh, at any rate, step one, find a toothbrush you like. Step two, get arms so you can actually use it. <laughs> Hardy har har. Step three, do not confuse your toothbrush with a stick of TNT. What? Your dentist will be really disappointed if you do. Orange, no one has ever confused those two things. It's an easy mistake to make, Pear. Oh, really? Sure. Earlier, you thought he was a human, but he turned out to be a pie. I did not think he was a pie. Well, he was, so I guess you got fooled. Orange. <laughs> oh. Okay, if you'll excuse me, I have a very serious video to make. As do I. How to not mistake pies for TNT. Orange, that is not what this video is about. It's what the people want, Pear. That's what they need. This is not at all what people need. Well, maybe it's what pies need. It's very difficult to tell the differences between pies and people, I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Orange. You've derailed another how-to episode. Ah, uh, don't feel bad, Pear. Here, I baked you a pie. Orange, that pie has a fuse. How uh, now? I messed up the pie for TNT. Yay! Ah! Hey there, fruit lovers. This week, Rads Vandenberg wants to know how to drive. You came to the right place, Rads. Pear's an expert driver. I am? Yep, you've been driving me bonkers for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right back at you, Orange. All right, step one. Grab the steering wheel at 10 o'clock and at 2 o'clock. Now, those are the only times you can grab it. Any other time in the steering wheel will electrocute you. No, Orange. Those just refer to the positions your hands go on the wheel. See? 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Oh, I 
get it. So if you put your hands in the wrong position on the wheel, that's when you get electrocuted. <laughs> no, dude, nobody gets electrocuted from a steering wheel. Oh, well that's boring. <laughs> Moving on. Step two, accelerating. Push the gas pedal with your foot. And press the NOS button with your thumb. <laughs> NOS? What are you talking about, NOS? You know, the nitrous oxide system they have on the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Dude, we're teaching the basics of driving. Nobody here is ready for NOS. Okay, gotcha. Just the easy stuff. Okay, let's start with jumps then. Step three, when jumping your car over a canyon. Orange, we haven't even covered windshield wipers yet. We are not ready to be jumping cars over canyons. Well, not with that attitude. Can we please keep this thing between the lines, Orange? Great idea, Pear. Step four, keep it between the lines. <laughs> That's right. Keep both eyes on the road so you don't accidentally swerve out of your lane. Keep both eyes on the road? Really? Well, sure. Why wouldn't you? Well, won't they get dirty and scraped up down there? <laughs> Dude, it's a figure of speech. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> get it? I? Yes, yes. Very funny. <laughs> okay, wow. Is it really that funny? I don't know. I think I might have accidentally inhaled a little too much nitrous oxide. <laughs> Great. Orange is on laughing gas. Just what the world needs. Also, helium. Sweet. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this thing up. Good idea, Pear. Let's jump ahead to the end. Hurry. <laughs> It's Orange and Pear, back again to tell you how to do things. This week, how to talk without moving your mouth. <laughs> har, har, har. Actually, this week we're tackling how to make your bed. Ooh, good question. Let me grab my hard hat and my eye protection. Eye protection? For making the bed? All righty then. Step one, get some wood and some power tools. This ain't gonna be easy, folks. God, uh, Orange, when people say they're making a bed, they don't mean they're literally making the bed from scratch. They're talking about putting the sheets back in order so it looks nice. That's all. Pear, I know what making the bed means. I just happen to do it with power tools. What? So as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, if your sheets are out of place, pull out your skill saw and start throwing it down. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, congrats, Orange. You've made an even bigger mess out of the sheets. Well, of course it doesn't look good yet. We haven't even whipped out the nail gun. Yeah. Ooh, this is fun. Orange, we are further from having made a bed than we were when we started. Okay, okay. We'll smooth it out with this belt sander, then push the whole thing through the table saw. Sound good? No, that does not sound good. That sounds actively bad. Ah, fine. Forget the tools. We'll just whack it a bunch with all this wood we have lying around. What? Yeah. Whackity, whack, whack, whack. whack. Oh, okay, just admit it, dude. You have no clue what you're doing. Of course I do. Go on. Lie down on the bed, Pear. It'll be the best rest you've ever had. I will go nowhere near that bed. There are splinters and nails sticking out all over the place. Huh. So you're saying you don't like nails and splinters in your bed? No. Okay, okay, geez. I'm not a mind reader, you know. I don't know all your weird bed preferences. <sighs> okay, step two. If the bed gets messed up, scrap it. Huh? Get the wrecking ball in here. We're going to have to start all over again. Make this bed from scratch. This was your whole plan all along, wasn't it? Um, Orange, Miley has the wrecking ball today. Oh, no, we don't have a wrecking ball? Oh, what are we gonna do? How will we ever destroy this monstrosity? Gee, I wonder. If you have an idea, speak up, Pear. We need brain power. I know where this is going, dude. It's so obvious. Enlighten us, please. Dude, just blow it up with TNT. You know you want to. Ah, oh, TNT, I hadn't thought that. Oh, really? You don't just so happen to have a pile of it right over there? Oh, so I do. Thanks, Pear. Great idea. I am not condoning this. Ah! Ah!